Hello and welcome to the Success by Design weekly masterclass with me, your host, Abigail Barnes, and this is episode 14. This week, we are talking about the two biggest time management beliefs that are keeping you stuck. For those of you who don't know me, if this is our first time hanging out, I am the founder of Success by Design Training, where we work with ambitious professionals and visionary organizations that want to improve productivity, but also create a culture and create a lifestyle of work-life balance. And so every week, I answer questions, talk about things that are coming up, talk about things that have happened to me in the past when it comes to time management, productivity, how to improve it. And um, next month, because it is March, we will be having um, training all around movement and mindset, which are two steps of our eight minute challenge that I will be telling you about next month and how you can get involved in that again. So, but for this week, the two biggest time management lies or beliefs that are keeping you stuck and they keep all of us stuck. So this first belief is something that I have um, battled with, struggled with, um, still do on some occasions and is one that comes up so many times when I speak to my clients and that is the belief that there's not enough time. So there's not enough time to get everything done, there's not enough time um, to have this conversation, to do this thing now. People find themselves using this sentence all the time and it's actually a uh, it's, it's a story that we are so addicted to telling ourselves and it's a lie because there is enough time. And the funny thing is, you have the same amount of time as the person sat next to you. You have the same amount of time as the person you're having a conversation with. So what is going on here? Well, we are so addicted to using this sentence over and over and over again because everybody uses it everybody says it so this is why it's one that keeps coming back you get rid of it you believe you have enough time everything always gets done you change your stories and then you start having a conversation with somebody else who says oh, i've got so much to do i just don't have enough time and before you know it you're back in that habit that loop again maybe this sounds familiar so what to do if you find yourself trapped in this I don't have enough time spiral story cycle? Because what happens if we keep saying it is it will become our reality. The universe will bring us all sorts of proof because it has to. That's what it does. It's like a loyal dog. It will bring you the proof of you don't have enough time. So when you start to change your beliefs that you do have enough time, you have enough time to get it all done, suddenly you start to look at what needs to be done in a totally different way. And the things that are usually like the busy work, you can suddenly spot them on your to-do list. And the priorities that actually need to be done, you have enough time to do them because you have eight hours every day in which to get your work done. So there is enough time. There's just maybe things that you don't need to be doing, which once you get into the mindset of there's enough, then you will be able to see them in a totally different way. So that's the first way to overcome these two, or to, you know, these two biggest beliefs when it comes to time management and how they're keeping you stuck. So the second belief that comes up again and again and again and again and again, even for myself, is uh, I don't know where to start. I hear this one so much and from myself at least once a week. I don't know where to start. I've got so much to do. I don't know where to start. I've just started a new project. I don't know where to start. I want to start a new project. I don't know where to start. And again, it's the same as this not having enough time. It's a story because we all have the answers to the questions inside ourselves. This is what coaching is about and this is what good coaching is about because a good coach will never tell you your answers. 
a good coach will ask you the questions to help you work out your own answers. The answers are all inside yourself. So all I'm doing with these uh, weekly masterclasses is giving you questions, is giving you coaching ideas for how to understand yourself, understand your mindset and understand and recognize these stories because awareness is the key to change. So two things that you can do when you don't know where to start. The first thing usually works 99.9% .9 of the time. What I would recommend you do is you get a pen, you get a piece of paper, probably bigger than a post-it note. You find a quiet space, you take yourself away from phones, from laptops, from computers, from everything. You find a quiet space and you write down everything that you need to do, everything that needs to get done, every single thing that's in this washing machine of a brain that is just cycling around and around and around and around and around. Write it all down. Because when you write it down, you get it out of your mind and it clears space. So that's the first, that's the first way. And that works 99.9% .9 of the time. If that doesn't work, if it is this 0.01% occasion and it just doesn't work, then try the second way. And the second way is to imagine you're having a conversation with a friend and the friend says to you, blah, whatever your name is, I've got so much to do, I just don't know where to start. Now imagine you're giving the advice to that friend because they're actually asking you a question, what should I do? And when people ask us questions, what should I do? We can give them an answer. If they don't ask us for an answer, that's what's known as unsolicited advice. Nobody wants unsolicited advice and nobody wants unsolicited coaching. So those are just two life lessons. You, um, you know what it's like when your parents try to give you advice. You don't want it. You didn't ask for it. So, But imagine that they were asking you for advice. What would you say to them if they were asking you for advice? And the, and the question they're saying to you is, I don't know where to start. I've got so much to do and I don't know where to start. So what answer would you give to them? What's the most important thing? What's the most important thing that has to be done today? What's the thing that your, your bosses, your superiors, um, your friends, your colleagues, what's the most important thing that has to be done? That's where you start. And then you break it down into chunks. Because as the, uh, the old adage, as the story goes, how do you eat an elephant? One mouthful at a time. Now we don't want to eat elephants. That's probably a really bad example, but it's just a, a, a parable that people use. Um, how, how was Rome built? One brick at a time, one day at a time. It wasn't built overnight. So I hope that these two tips are helpful for you um, for the most common questions that are coming up. Um, if you've got any questions, leave them below. If you would like me to answer any questions for you next week or in upcoming um, weekly masterclasses, then email hello at success by design training. Uh, and if you have missed any of the previous 14 episodes, they are all on our YouTube channel. So just search on YouTube, Abigail Barnes, and all of the videos will come up there, plus a load of other amazing, exciting videos recorded over the last few years for um, various interviews uh, with all sorts of amazing people. So it has been awesome to spend this time with you and I look forward to seeing you again next week when I will be sharing eight things I wish I knew before my wake up call because next week's Success by Design Masterclass is the anniversary, the eight year anniversary of my wake up call that I had on a business trip to the US. So I'll be telling you all about that next week and I look forward to seeing you then. So take care and until then, keep being awesome.